Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending October 3rd. First up, this was sent by my friend David F. Actually, it was part of the Dumpster Divers group. Two of the posts today I'm going to take right out of the Dumpster Divers group on Facebook. And if you're interested on Facebook, um, it's a good group to join. A lot of people that are science geeks. This was Aaron, IPv4, free pool reaches zero. They actually, the assigned name company that passes out all the different numbers, every every device on the Internet has to have an address, passed out the last of the numbers because of the way it was set up. There's only a limited amount in the IPv4 pool, and a lot of people have not switched over to the new IPv6, which uses more characters and gives us, I guess, some people claim it's more addresses than we do have atoms and particles in the universe. So if we switch to IPv6, which has been around for decades, but they haven't done that. Instead, what's happening is a lot of the providers, your internet service providers, are just doing network address translation so that they can use less numbers and then just at their level reassign them to the individual users, kind of like the same principle of what your router does in your home. You don't have an IPv4 address for necessarily every device in your home. You just have your standard one address and then your router translates that into private addresses within your home so it's just kind of like another step another layer so hopefully they'll get underway and start upgrading the system or maybe they'll just until they have no other choice and everything becomes either too congested or equipment dies maybe we'll stay on ipv4 for another 10 years who knows and next up this was sent by my friend tom h what is stirring deep inside Saturn? Strange spiraling ripples in the gas giant's rings are revealing the planet's internal structure. What you see with the rings, the Cassini probe is still circling around. It's been there for a long time. And what you can see is the moon circles Saturn. As you can see, the, the moon's tugging gravitationally at the rings, and it produces ripples, the same kind of principle as the moon pulling on the ocean. And you get the tides. You get the motion of the... You get the ocean itself actually rising up, giving you the tides, and actually falling because of the tugging of the moon. Well, something strange is tugging on the rings and pulling them towards the inside. So that means there is something that has a lot of gravity on in the planet Saturn itself, but is kind of uneven. It's in one particular spot, and as the planet rotates, they think on a six- or a seven-hour cycle, this place of high density, this place of high gravity pull, is tugging on the rings. It's hard to really say we could do something like send a probe down because when it reaches around 5 to 10 atmospheres, basically you're at the limits of what almost any probe we can construct will survive without basically just being crushed to pieces. So they're having to use this indirect evidence to try to find out and uh, give an idea of what's going on inside Saturn itself. But that's kind of interesting that the Cassini mission is still going on and still learning new things about the rings of Saturn. And this next one was from Tom W. and also from the Dumpster Diver site. NASA confirms that liquid water flows on Mars. I talked about it, I believe last week I mentioned this, that NASA was going to have this uh, fantastic or I forget phenomenal announced whatever they worded it in. And I said, no, it's not going to be that phenomenal. It's going to be just a general announcement of something, you know, newer. And it was. It was uh, about liquid water flowing on Mars. It's not that, and, and some people said, you know, oh, big deal, you know, we always knew that water was on Mars, you know, what's the big deal? It's not the fact that we didn't know that water was on Mars. We've always known in the pole, from long, long ago, we've known that the poles of Mars have not just uh, frozen water, but they have frozen carbon dioxide, too. But what we wanted to know is down in the areas where astronauts would possibly be landing in the future, is there ever a chance that we would find liquid water in those areas? And I will give you a link just after I talk about this. I'll give you a link to uh, uh, a little bit of the uh, indirect evidence we had just before this. But what happened was this uh, spectrograph type of uh, device was uh, beaming um, signals down as it flew over. It's actually a satellite that flies over Mars and was actually getting direct reflections back that confirmed that liquid water exists in a state and down in latitudes to where astronauts would actually be. Now how the water actually comes about, it's these black streaks on the sides of hills and what they did at first is by just looking at them themselves they surmised that this could possibly be water but they're still trying to figure out where is it coming from. Is it coming from the atmosphere that salts in the soil are pulling water out of the atmosphere? They found out that there's quite a bit of humidity even with the thin atmosphere, and that could be happening. There could be aquifers underneath bubbling up, or there could be another source of the water that they're not even 
aware of or haven't even thought of. So, And by the way, it's not the kind of water that you could scoop up with a cup and drink. It's very brackish, very salty water to be able to survive in some of the average temperatures in those areas of about minus 20 Fahrenheit. It has to be extremely salty and extremely brackish. So we're not talking about water that you can just uh, use easily, but it's still a heck of a lot easier than trying to figure out a way to get the polar ice to the astronauts because you don't want to be able to you don't want to have to bring water to Mars if you're coming as astronauts and explorers you don't want to have to bring that kind of stuff along it's much better if the planet has it in some kind of form you can use in some kind of form that's close by so it would not be that difficult to take a brackish type of salt water and distill it or using different methods make it useful and uh, Evidently, the kind of salts that it's in, um, the perchlorates that they're talking about that this water exists in, could also be used for uh, other uses too, including rocket fuel. So if you get a chance, check that out. And the link, I'll include the link in the article that I want you to look at is about the different rovers on Mars. And the guy is named Kobe Boykins, and he designed, I think he designed the solar panels and the unfolding um, the unfolding method for the solar panels to at least one if not more of them and he talks about all the history of the rovers all the way from spirit and opportunity all the way through curiosity and talks a little bit about the new rover that's going to mars i think in 2020 i think when the schedule is if they stay on schedule so check it out it's about a 25 minute video and it gives you a really good overall view of what's going on in mars right now with nasa as far as the robotic exploration and he, he does it really really well it moves along very quickly and it moves along very interestingly so yeah it's not definitely not one of those boring talks where somebody's just giving a lecture and last up this is from my friend joe w big change coming to google next week i don't think it's really that big a change that people are talking about you'll log on to uh, your google search and all of a sudden it'll say alphabet which is their new name um, no, I don't think that's going to happen. Alphabet is the trading symbol they're going to go to. They're going to trade stock under the name Alphabet so that they can have sub-companies like Google Search and other companies. I guess the stock investors in the company have gotten a little bit perturbed that a lot of Google's experimental projects have not really you know, given a lot of profits to the stockholders. They're always looking for profits, especially short-term profits. Well, Google wants to kind of put money into research and investigate new things, which I think is always a good idea. So this way, by kind of dividing the company up, you don't have the stockholders get quite so uh, ticked off so they can you know, buy stocks in one part of the company or buy stocks in another part of the company. They're going to have Class A and Class B shares. And uh, you can just read the whole article and get the idea there. But, yeah, all the people that are thinking you're going to log on, I mean, it, it might be possible, but I don't really think it's very likely. I think your Google search engine, when you go there, it's going to say, it's going to still say Google, and you're still going to Google stuff. And anyway, as we're coming to an end here, I would like to thank everybody last week that helped participate with me in our, uh, our little experiment with astral photography, uh, taking photographs of the moon and the eclipse. I was I got a break, and anybody that was following me on Facebook along with the other friends that were taking pictures too, I got a break right as the eclipse become full, and it lasted. the break in the clouds lasted just until about the halfway point, and the clouds rolled in again. So I was able to get some decent pictures, still not as clear and sharp as some of my friends that shared with me some of the people that posted their pictures on Facebook and shared with me got some very very excellent pictures but I'll share my few pictures here as we go out with the TDD report and I would like to thank everybody for watching and I will catch you next week